I like it when you show up. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss OTC and penny stocks that have potential. Now, maybe that potential means it's going to run tomorrow, or maybe I'm looking for stocks that are going to grow over the next few months or the next few years. And that's what we're looking at here, a stock that I think is going to grow for the next few years easily. Now, this stock is on the New York Stock Exchange. Keep in mind, though, any stock under $5 is a penny stock. It doesn't matter what market they are on. So we're taking a look here at Pitney Bowes on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker PBI. This is a global shipping and mailing company that provides technology, logistics, and financial services to more than, get this, 90% of the Fortune 500 companies. Wow! Small business, retail, enterprise, and government clients around the world rely on Pitney Bowes to remove the complexity of sending mail and parcels. Now you're thinking to yourself, I've heard of this company before. I don't doubt that. This company's been around for 100 years, but boy, have they come a long way since then. Right now, they have got over a million clients. They've literally made a thousand improvements to their products and kept up with technological breakthroughs with innovations. And they've done it by keeping to one endearing commitment, that is to do the right thing and do it the right way. So what exactly made this company famous? Well, it was their postage meter. It was the first machine where you could actually print your postage right onto the letter, and it was a huge success. Now, the founder of the company, Arthur Pitney, he's the one who actually created and invented the machine, but he didn't start the company until he got with his better half, Walter Bowes. Let's just call him a marketing genius. Between the two of them, they marketed their little device across the country, and and it just didn't change the way the UPS was doing business, but also how businesses were doing business and ultimately how the consumer was getting their mail. Now, this launched the company. Their first year was huge, but as time went on, they had to keep making improvements and innovations to their products to keep up with customer demands and technological breakthroughs in the world. And one of the very first things they came up with was their DM in 1949. This was their desk model. It was so small, it was impressive. You could keep it on your desk and you could do your mail right there so each person could have one at their desk. Then, in 1951, one, believe it or not, they actually created and patented a device where you could refill your postage meter with a rotary phone. How many of you remember a rotary phone? But it actually didn't take off until almost 30 years later when they had the touch tone phone. Then, of course, as you came into the 2000s, you had the internet exploding. People were having computers at home. So they went into mail now, pay later. They were financing postage, and that opened up the door for an entirely new stream of revenues. Now they could actually finance their equipment, lease it, rent it, sell it, and they were doing that all through their new Pitney Bowes Bank, which they were also calling the Wheeler Financial. And the last big innovation they had was in 2016, when basically they moved their whole operation over to the cloud the commerce cloud, as they like to call it. They have their shop and ship over there, their logistics. I mean, their whole operation now is on the cloud so that everybody in the world has easy access to real-time information. And you can only imagine how important that is to Fortune 500 companies. Now, as you can imagine, if you're doing business with over 90% of Fortune 500 companies, you're doing a ton of business. You have got a load of companies that you have partnered with. But now consider all of those mid-sized companies they're working with, all of the little businesses, all of the ma and pa establishments. You add all of those up, I'll bet you there's more of those than there are Fortune 500 companies. And I could prove it to you if you wanted to dive into the news presses if you got a couple of days, because I'm sure the news presses go back almost 100 years probably. But you can see a sampling here. These are just what I found over the last six to eight months. I'm sure there are more. And most of these companies we've never heard of. Deckers, Ambi Robotics, Easy Ship. They tell us that Pitney Bowes Pre-Sort Service, which is another one of their uh, subsidiaries, is the largest work share partner of the United States Postal Service. 
How's that for a partner? They're also working with Funding Circle, Narvar, Sendo, Luxor One, Cresco Data. I know, we haven't heard of any of these companies, but we've heard of most of the Fortune 500s, and they're doing business with both. I also found that they got an awarded contract from the federal government from over $79 million. So they are doing business with everybody. And right now they made a deal which is just going to expand their business even further. This came out on June 21st. They made a deal with Global E. Global E is to acquire the border-free cross-border e-commerce service from Pitney Bowes. Pitney Bowes has a couple subsidiaries, a couple products, and their border-free cross-border e-commerce is one of them. Now, Global E is on the market. She is on the NASDAQ. Her name is Global E Online, uh, ticker GLBE, and is currently at $27.50. Now, they tell us here that Global E, the world's leading cross-border end-to-end platform for brands and retailers, today announced that it has entered into a definitive agreement with Pitney Bowes to acquire the global shipping and mailing company, Border Free Cross Border. Now, Border Free helps retailers enter new global markets by localizing their domestic website in over 200 countries and territories, simplifying the compliance, the taxes, and the regulation process. In addition, the companies will begin a strategic partnership and commercial relationship whereby Pitney Bowes will provide cross-border e-commerce logistics services to Global E and its clients. Now, they tell us down here that Global E's mission is to make global e-commerce, not shipping, e-commerce, border agnostic. Global E is the world's leading platform to enable and accelerate global direct-to-consumer cross-border e-commerce. The chosen partner of more than 650 global brands and retailers across the United States, Europe, and Asia. Now, I've brought you on over here to an article that just gives us a little clarity on that news press. Global E has completed its acquisition of Border Free, a cross-border e-commerce business owned by Pitney Bowes. The company paid $100 million in cash for the business, which helps retailers enter new global markets by localizing their websites. Border Free operates in more than 200 countries and territories, helping e-commerce businesses simplify compliance and regulations, processing when shipping out of country. It enables orders to be placed and paid for in 75 different currencies. The deal was first announced on June 21st, and as part of the deal, Bitney Bowes will continue to market the Border Free suite of offerings to its global e-commerce customers. They tell us that Global E was founded in 2013 by Amir Chalet. The company offers online shoppers localized experiences regardless of where the brand they are exploring is located. This includes streamlined international logistic options and local tax and custom duties collection. Its platform supports more than 30 languages. Now I found this site, they've got a couple other sites here, but this one will basically tell you what this company is doing. They do more than just the shipping aspect. As a matter of fact, so does Pitney Bowes. They tell us here that we are border free. Using border free's infrastructure components, entrepreneurs can rapidly launch tailored platforms and digital marketplaces for different verticals. And they tell us down here, live streaming and interactive commerce, AI and VR enabled shopping, multiple on-screen participants, all-in-one studio, creator marketplace. This is part of their business. They are helping these entrepreneurs actually get their e-commerce sites set up. And along with that, they take care of all this stuff so that if you want to sell from Asia to America, I don't have to pay you in your money. I can pay you in my money. And they make it very simple. They brought it all together so nobody even knows you're really shopping in another country in another language. So they deal with the e-commerce platform tax compliance, and of course, all the shipping, logistics, and tracking of your parcels as well. So you got an idea what Border Free is all about, working with businesses internationally and making it just as easy if they were right here. And that is big business that has brought in a lot of new clients into Pitney Bowes and to Global E. But the other aspect that is bringing in a lot of new business is what they have called regional delivery services. Now, regional delivery services you are familiar with with Amazon, their prime time two-day delivery. 
they are working with regional delivery. Now, our country is set up on nationwide distribution. So if I want to mail a letter to my neighbor, it has to go 150 miles away to the city where they sort all the mail. Then it gets sent back to my post office who will then bring it to my neighbor who's right across the street. That's a lot of extra time and a lot of extra work that isn't necessary. So regional distributors find that if your letter isn't leaving this region, there's no reason to go 150 miles away. So they set up a new hub and it goes to a different pre-sorting office locally and comes right back and you save yourself time and a lot of work. Well, that's what they're doing all around the world and all around the country. They are setting up regional hubs so that depending where you live, you'll work with this warehouse or this office. And that's what is making consumers happy. We're cutting down that time period. So this is big business form as well. Now let's go take a look at some of the fundamentals of this company. So we're taking a look at the share structure now for Pitney Bowes. Her outstanding shares is 174 million. Unrestricted shares is where I normally go to get my float. It's as close as I found you can get. They don't list a float either, so I had to go do a Google search to find this. And when you do a Google search for a float, best I can say is don't take the first one you find. You never know how outdated it is. Find three or four sites that all say the same thing. So I did find it. It said about 162 million, which isn't bad at all. A little more information I can give you about this is you've got a lot of uh, institutional holders on this stock. We did have some insider buys here recently, July and February. You can see that the insiders, meaning the management of the company, own about 7% of this company's stock. We, the general public, own about 27%, but institutions own more than half, 67%. You got Vanguard, BlackRock, William Miller. This is just a small portion of the top of the list of the top shareholders. So there's a lot of institutional interest in this company because it has solid fundamentals. They've been here 100 years. They've only been getting bigger and they're still getting bigger and they're now jumping with leaps and bounds with the cloud and all their innovations and consumer products that pander to the consumer. So everybody knows where it's going. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Jumping back to that information, let's look at her financials. What sort of money is she making? I told you she was making good money. Now this company's been doing in excess of $3 billion a year for the last four years, closing in on $4 billion at the end of 2021. And they're taking home over a billion dollars. Quarterly, are they keeping up the momentum? We did have a little bit of a fall here. They say this came because of COVID and expansion, but they don't expect it to be there long because they've taken on a whole new client base that is just exploding right now. So their financials look really good. Disclosures, anything new over here? Well, we do have an S8 uh, that came out a couple weeks ago. The S8 is about giving shares to the employees. Then you've got a uh, 10Q here, which is their quarterly financial. Do want to bounce into that for a second. So what I want to show you here is that they've actually got three divisions. They've got lots of different products. They've got box tools. They've got ProSend. They've got lots of these different products that they offer out there, but they all fall under three divisions. Global e-commerce, pre-sort service, and Sentex solutions. Global e-commerce is their financial aspects. This is financing their equipment, their postage. This is anything that they do that the bank is involved in. Then you have their pre-sort services. This is actually sorting the mail. Wherever their hubs are located at, that's where they're sorting the mail at. And then the Sentex Solutions is your cloud. This is where you're buying, you're shipping, you're doing your logistics, you're tracking, uh, you're working your e-commerce through, through your sites. That's all of that. And all of that together, the three divisions did make them $3.6 billion at the end of the year. Now you've probably noticed all those awards that I've been flashing through there. Those are all their awards that they've been receiving. Things like uh, the best employer for diversity, the best employers for women, the best place to work for LGBTQ. This has been going on since the 50s. They don't just treat their customers well, they treat their employees well. And it is listed as one of the best places to work in America. One of the other things that they've done for their employees, back in the 50s, they started a program called uh, Dedication to Education. And this allowed all of their employees a way to get college funds 
for their children. So they don't just take care of their customers, they take care of their employees too, which is really what makes a business thrive. The employees on the inside, they'll do a good job, your customers will be happy as well. We are now gonna be doing some charting. We're gonna be looking at PBI on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform. I got it from TD Ameritrade, so can you. Sign up for their free trading account. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Shh, I hate saying that, but it's true. All you gotta do is keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like. So we are looking at a one year, one day chart here. We had a high back here in November of $8.20 and a low just a few days ago of $3.13 and that is a 52 week low. Technicals, well you can see we've got a perfect pattern here. You see how this looks like a mirror image? When the blue line and the red line on the PPO and the ADX are coming together, the price is falling. When the two lines start to spread apart like they are now, the price goes up. Looks like we have a push up right now. The MACD has got a crossover on the yearly and the RSI is really low, but starting to come up. Let's look at that six month, four hour view. Doesn't look a whole lot different than the yearly. We have been under the 200 all this time. We had a big jump on some uh, financials. The earnings came out, they must have been good. She fell away fought to try to get near that 200 again, had a big tumble here and has fallen all the way down to that low and right now is starting to bounce off of it with only the dip in the pre-market aftermarket period. We see our PPO is above the pink like the MACD which is also above the pink and signal line. So both of these look good. Our ADX is planted right now. It shows we haven't got a trend decided yet. Are we going up or down? It hasn't been determined. And our RSI on the four hour big difference is up to 59, just under the 60 where I like to see it at. Taking a look at the 20 day, one hour view. All right, about 18, 16 days ago, we had a high of $4.22 and it was five days ago, we hit that low of $3.13. You see all the SMAs here coming down and churning up right now. You've got the 200 just on top of the price and everything else is underneath and it looks like it is being pushed up over that 200 right now. Our PPO looks good and strong. It is pushing up over the pink. Uh, looks like it's just getting above its signal line as well. ADX still no determination on the trend. That's what our ADX tells us. If it's going straight, there is no trend. If it's going up or down, that doesn't determine the direction of the trend. It just tells you if there's a trend. You just want a long line, either up or down. Our MACD looks like we got a crossover starting here too. Sure do. She is just in the picture of moving up and 57 on the hourly. I want to see that five day, five minute folks. So we've had one, two, three, four days of climbing. Once she got above the 200 after falling under it very hard, hitting that low bubble, she is bouncing. Now she was over the 200 here, but she didn't push, did she? Off of this low bubble, it seems she's gotten a little more thrust and she is pushing upward. Boy, that was a nice jump the other day. And right now she has waited, waited for that 200 day SMA to catch up to her. You can't get too far away from it. Sooner or later, you've got to come back and tag it. You've just got to. So when she got that high, you could almost expect that she was going to come down. She took her time about it. She went sideways. Instead of falling, she could have just come straight down to that 200 right there. Instead, she was actually climbing very slowly, just dilly-dallying around, tagged the 200 here, started paying homage to it, found its position and is now starting to bounce off the 200 and it looks like it has made a decision to start climbing again. But we're not looking at this for a run tomorrow or the next week. I am talking about a growth stock, folks. I'm talking about this being bigger at the end of the month than it was at the beginning of the month. Three months down the road, it being far bigger than it was today. A year down the road, you're thinking, boy, should I sell this? This is looking pretty good. That's the kind of stock I see this as. I think this is going to be huge as years go by. It has been 100 years. I agree. You'd think they'd be higher than $8, but look at Ford. Ford has been around for 100 years, and they were at $20 for the longest time. Now that they're making changes and getting into electric vehicles, Ford's not the same stock anymore because it's not the same company. I say the same thing about Pitney Bowes. 
I'd say that they are evolving. They are moving into the digital world with physical products to make us happy. And I think they've got it all going on right now. So I think Pitney Bowes is worth your DD. What do you think? So in my honest opinion, folks, I think Pitney Bowes is a great long hold. She may have some good bounces here and there, but I'm not looking at her to get in and get out real quick. I think this stock is going to be worth the hold over the long period of time. They've been here for 100 years. They have met each innovation when it was necessary. When technology changed, they changed right with it. And now they're into the cloud. And the e-commerce business is just becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. So... A little DD may go a long ways for your future. Pitney Bowes, folks. I like it. Do your DD. I think you'll like it too. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.